I think, I think this guy's from England. Hey mate, love your videos with all the different action cameras that came out last year. What's your current favorite action camera for 2022? Is it the GoPro Hero 10? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm gonna answer that for you guys today. And hint, it is not the GoPro Hero 10. But with all the different action cameras that came out last year, the action camera market is more competitive than ever. GoPro came out with the Hero 10, DJI released the Action 2, Insta360 has the 1R, they've got the Go 2, they've got the 1X2, and the DJI Osmo Action 1, or, or just the Osmo Action, this is still a really good camera. So when you look at all the action cameras that are out there, uh, they're all real good. But if I had to choose just one, if, if I'm gonna go out to do an action sport and I'm gonna choose one camera to take with me, what would that be? If I'm gonna go surfing or I'm gonna go snowboarding, I'm the one doing the action sport, there's only one camera that I would bring and it is still, for the second consecutive year in a row, the Insta360 One X2. And today I'm gonna to give you five reasons why the One X2 is still my favorite action camera out of all these really, really good action cameras. And then I'm gonna give you three tips on shooting with the One X2. So if you've picked this camera up, just a few little tips, things to think about while shooting with this 360 camera. But first, just to show you why this is my favorite 360 camera, we just went to Brian Head, Utah, a little family snowboard trip, and I shot a ton with pretty much just this camera. I had a GoPro, there it is. I had a GoPro on my helmet. I didn't use that footage pretty much at all. I only really like the footage coming out of this thing. And here's, here's why. I think alone, just from that little 30 second montage, you could probably understand why the Insta360 One X2 is still my favorite action camera, but here are five reasons why I think this is still the best action camera out there. And number one is I don't have to think about the camera as much as if I'm shooting with something like the GoPro or something like the DJI Action 2. These cameras are, are they only shoot this way. They're shooting one frame and I really have to be very cognizant of what that frame is. So I'm in the middle of surfing or I'm in the middle of snowboarding or, or wake surfing, something like that. And I have to think, is the camera pointed at me? Whereas with the One X2, I pop this thing on the invisible selfie stick, I extend it out there, and now I can I can kind of focus more on the sport that I'm doing and not think so much about the camera, because as long as the camera can see me, it has a shot of me. So for like those shots where I'm going through the trees, as long as I know that the camera's behind me somewhere, I know it can see me, I know I have a shot. With the GoPro or the, or the Action 2, if I have that on a pole, the angle could be just off and the whole time I could have a shot where like my head is just cut off or, or I could have a shot where it's just my head and you don't see the board at all. But with this, but with this thing, I know uh, it's everything. It's a 360 world that it is shooting. But also part of that whole not thinking about the camera so much is that when I'm doing things with my daughters, maybe I'm on my skateboard, she's on her scooter and we're kind of bombing next to each other. Maybe we're going sledding in Brian head together. I don't have to think so much about the camera. I can really hang out with her and just kind of have the camera out there and I know I have a shot of us. I don't have to constantly be that dad behind the camera or or like watching the screen, making sure that the shot is, is kind of framed up properly. I can just 
do my thing, hang out with my daughter, have fun. And this thing uh, I know is gonna get the shot for me. Now the number two reason this is still my favorite action camera is that I can change the aspect ratio in post. Whereas if I'm shooting with something like the GoPro, I choose, hey, this is gonna be 16 by nine while I'm filming it. Or I choose, hey, this is gonna be nine by 16. I think, hey, I'm gonna film this for Instagram, for that social media post, or I'm gonna flip it this way and say this is for YouTube, this is kind of for my personal use, I like 16 by nine. But when I film with the one, oh. <laughs> but when I film with the 1X2, I can reframe my footage in post, and then I can say I wanna take that one 10, 15, 30 second clip, and I want it to be vertical, I want it to be nine by 16, export it. I can go back to that same clip, I can say I want it to now be 16 by nine, and then export it again. So I can take the same clip, put it on Instagram, put it to TikTok, all that jazz, but then I have the 16 by nine version for these videos here. And just for my personal uses, I, I like 16 by nine way better. The only reason I have nine by 16 footage or, or any clips are nine by 16 is, is to put on Instagram. Okay, number three reasons why this is still my favorite action camera the stabilization. The stabilization on this thing, it's called flow state stabilization. It is bananas. Now, action cameras have come a long way. The GoPro Hero 10, the Action 2, stabilization on these things is, is crazy good. And how they're doing it is basically, they're basically doing a, a rectangle inside of a rectangle, if you can imagine that. So the inside rectangle, that's what we actually see in the final footage but it's recording a larger rectangle so that as the camera shakes and wibbles wobbles, that inside rectangle can make up for it, right? So digitally, it is stabilizing the footage. And with these cameras, the larger the outside rectangle is in comparison to the smaller inside rectangle, the better it can stabilize. So if that inside rectangle on this thing is, let's say this big, and the outside rectangle is this big, I can take that inside rectangle and I can turn it like this far before it hits the edges or go this way. So I can take a GoPro and I can go like this and the horizon stays level. Now that's very cool, but with this guy, I'm taking that inside rectangle and I'm putting it inside of an infinite globe that it's actually recording. So you could take this camera and you could flip it upside down. You could, you could spin it in the air like this and I could always stay locked onto my subject no matter what, which is crazy. But again, it's because that inside rectangle, that, that reframe footage, that's just a box within a globe. So it's pretty much infinite stabilization. Now the number four reason that I still think this is the best action camera, why it's still my favorite action camera is it's the thing that people notice first when they see the footage that comes out of it. And that is that this pole right here, this, this pole that I hold as I go snowboarding or as I skateboard, the pole disappears automatically in the shot. And that is a, a major point. That's probably the thing that, that makes this most unique in comparison to other action cameras is that that pole disappears. You've all seen the footage where you have a GoPro, you put it on a selfie stick, you extend it way out there, and in the shot is is a pole. With this thing, it looks like a drone is, is following you. Like people often say, was there a drone there? And the number five reason why the 1X2 is still my very favorite action camera, and it is, it's the Insta360 app. Insta360 is doing more than any other company in the 360 world to make their app make this close to as easy as as one of these these normal action cameras. But the Insta360 app has gotten so dang good at how it allows me to reframe my footage mainly with their deep track feature. The deep track feature, I pretty much go in here, I open a file, I put a box around me, like let's say I'm gonna do a snowboard run, I pretty much always want the camera just to get a shot of me. Or last month we went out to the desert and I held this outside my brother-in-law's buggy, so I know I always want the shot to be focused on the buggy. So I can take a five minute, six minute, minute, seven minute clip, go in there, select the buggy or select myself, select whatever the subject is, and then just hit deep track, let it run. I can go do other things, let it do its thing, and when I come back, I have a fully reframed file that I didn't have to sit there and put keyframes on, I didn't have to do the viewfinder, I just got to tell it, yeah, that's what I wanted to look at the whole time. And there's a few other things in the app. The viewfinder mode is still my favorite mode to reframe in. Basically, you go in here, you hit record, and then you use your phone to re-record within that 360 world 
the 2D footage that you want it to output. Does that make sense? If not, go go watch that video. I made a whole video on how I reframe my footage from this camera. It's really simple. Okay, those are my five reasons why the One X2 is still my favorite action camera. Here are three tips. If you have just recently got this camera, or maybe you've had it for a while, and you just haven't thought of these three things. Here's three tips, I hope they help. Number one is imagine the shot that you're getting with this camera. Because I know I said that you don't have to think about this camera as much, but you do still have to think about where it is in space. Because again, if I'm doing something like snowboarding or like wake surfing, and I am right Riding myself, I know that as I have this camera out in front of me, do I do I want a high shot? If the camera's up high, I'm gonna have a down angle shot on me. Do I want do I want it super low, like like put it down by the wave or something like that, and get like this cool up shot of me as I'm wake surfing or something like that? So you have to kind of imagine where the camera's gonna be, and then kind of think about keeping it there. Because this is such an easy camera to shoot, I I just like hand it to other people while we're snowboarding. I gave it to my nephew Talon, I gave it to my brother-in-law Trent, and I gave it to Morgan as well. And Morgan, while riding, kind of it was kind of like up in the air, and then it was down, and then it was up, and then it was down as she kind of rode. She was kind of doing this. A Lot. And while you get a stable shot, you can imagine that if the camera is always going to stay locked on you, the shot is going to be down angle to up angle to down angle to smooth, very stable. But if the camera is going up and down, up and down like this, you're going to have a shot that that kind of does this in the final product. So while I'm writing, I, I am thinking about even as I do whatever I'm doing, I usually think keep the, the camera about waist level and then try to keep it there no matter what. So where the camera is in space, that's the shot that I'm gonna have. I want it to stay consistent. And then exactly opposite of consistent is number two tip for you guys, and that is to mix up your shots. If I am on a 10 minute snowboard run, I don't wanna just hold the camera out in front of me the entire time and have one shot that's just me riding down the mountain. Every minute or so, I'm gonna switch the shot. I'm gonna put the camera like down by the snow, try to get like a cool shot of maybe my boots, maybe do it behind me, get that, that follow shot go back to an in front. Mixing up the shots while you're doing something is, is literally gonna give you more shots to work with in post so that you don't just have one kind of boring video. And then lastly, tip number three is, is something that I think when I first started using 360 cameras, I, I thought the opposite. Or maybe this is just a counterintuitive idea, but keep your clips on the longer side. And like I said, when I first got into 360 cameras, I thought almost the exact opposite. I was trying to shoot short clips so that later I would have less to reframe, less to have to go through. And now I pretty much shoot almost exactly opposite. Now, if I go something like snowboarding, before I get off the lift, I'll hit start. I'll go the entire run all the way down filming, putting the camera in different spots, trying to get different shots. And then when we're done with the run, I'll usually stop the camera or sometimes not even until we're back on the lift because I want to get some cool shots like in the lift line. And what I learned is basically that while re framing, it's easier to work with one long file than 15 little ones. Ultimately, when you're actually reframing, when you're doing that whole reframing process, especially when you're using something like Deep Track, you can take one long clip, hit Deep Track, and just let the whole thing run. But if you have 10 separate clips, you have to go into a clip, let that load up, start Deep Track, select the box, let that run, exit that out, go back into another clip, start Deep Track. Again, very counterintuitive, but True. Oh, there is one more reason why this is my favorite action camera, and it is it is this piece. This is new. This is the quick reader for the Insta360. Now, this thing can be used in a couple different ways. It has a SD card slot there, so you put your micro SD in. It has a USB-C port right here that plugs into the camera. And then if you lift this little flap bit, you got a lightning port right there to plug straight into your iPhone. And this can be used two different ways. I pretty much only use it the second way. But the first way is you pop off the little door, you plug this in via the USB-C, and when your camera is on and that is plugged into the side, it's actually gonna record directly to the SD card slot that's on here. So instead of recording to the internal SD card, it's gonna record to this SD card. Now, why would that be cool? Because after you've recorded here, you pop this out, you grab your iPhone, plug it into your phone, and now it transfers files from your camera or files that you recorded to the app 
so much faster. Now the one problem with using this plugged in to the side of the camera like this is that it now renders the camera no longer waterproof. So how I use the camera, I keep the little door in there and I just use the camera totally just like normal. And then when I'm done, I just pop the battery out. I take the SD card out of here. I put the SD card into this quick reader and then I plug the quick reader into my phone. Yeah, this thing has been a major game changer as far as how quickly I'm able to take files from the camera, start working on them. I use a deep track that's made things way faster. Just in general, Insta360 is looking for ways to make the workflow that is 360 faster and better. Okay, those are my five reasons why the Insta360 ONE X2, it's still my favorite action camera. Look how, hang on, look how compact this thing is. This is like a, a very normal, you know, Patagonia puffy jacket, but the uh, Insta360 camera goes in one pocket. This thing, when it's broken down is, I think it's just over eight inches and that can fit in the other pocket. And uh, yeah. I got my whole action camera set up in the pockets of my jacket at any time. And that's a that's a huge benefit also. Probably another reason why I always have it with me is just that the whole setup is so small and then this pole it gets it gets so long. Look how long that thing gets. Can you see? Yeah, more reasons um why this is i hope that in 2022 new cameras come out and they blow me away and there's something amazing and awesome and and even better but for now the insta360 one x2 it is the best action camera on the market fight me in the comments will ya and i know you guys will so <laughs> i'll see you in the comments and I'll, and I'll see you soon. Let me know, what do you guys actually think? Do you think this is the best? Or do you think, do you think that one of these action cameras is better than this thing? But again, I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Tell me in the comments if, if you agree with me or you think I'm just, you know, some idiot on the internet. That's totally wrong. <laughs> I know either way, you'll let me know. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye. That was very successful. You were kind of like in the perfect spot. That was so successful. If your goal was to cover my neck and body in snow. Oh no.